Well, hello everybody and welcome to 2022. This is our first webinar series, Hydro Terrors webinar series for this year. And uh, it's great to have you all here. Many thanks for joining. So today's topic is around digital solutions for sampling and reporting. And we're joined by Russell Schindler from a company called SampleServe, and they have uh, a lot of expertise in designing software for helping with your field sampling and reporting. Uh, next slide, thanks, Russell. Doesn't seem to be wanting to slip go now. Mm. Hang on. There we go. Excellent. We're a bit rusty. So uh, the speakers today is myself, Richard Campbell. I'm managing director of Hydra Terra, and uh, we've got Russell Schindler, who's CEO of Sample Serve. Um, so welcome, Russ. Next slide, please. Just a bit of uh, administration before we get started. So for those of you who haven't been on our webinars before, we love getting your questions and we try to give you answers. Uh, in order to raise a question, please use the Q&A button to ask questions not the chat, it's much easier at the end if we've just got one list, um, but we love your questions and that's a big part of this. So looking forward to seeing those. Uh, next slide, thanks Russ. So why does Hydra Terra undertake this webinar series? Well, we like to generate awareness uh, in the marketplace. Um, on both our suppliers and also various issues that are going on that uh, affect our market. And uh, today's a classic example of a new supplier that has a technology which will revolutionize how a lot of consultants go about their work. Well, we like to help to train the industry and uh, a big part of training is obviously educating in that broad range of technologies and how they can be used. And then finally, we like to understand industry needs. So whilst we believe there are a lot of good technology solutions, it's really important to understand from people at the coalface about what they're really needing and how well this aligns with their needs. So looking forward to your questions. Next slide, thank you. So a little bit about our presenter today. So Russell's a geologist like myself and uh, he trained at Western Michigan University some time ago. I believe he started his studies back in about 1982. He's got a wealth of experience dealing with contaminated sites and it's really this experience both both with groundwater and soil contamination and with soil vapor that underpins the ability to create this software package that they've worked on. I must admit looking at the package for the first time because I've spent a lot of my career working in contaminated sites I thought wow this replaces a lot of what I used to do as a uh, as a junior working in the consulting field. Uh, in terms of how you could contour data, how you could manage your field data. Um, but it's something that the industry has been looking for for a long time to help make our field work more easy and uh, really is important because it's often pretty challenging to keep those large field programs organised. So what I like about this package is it's really born out of people who understand the market need understand the technical challenges of working in the field. And uh, Russell has put all of that knowledge into developing up this software, which um, Hydra Terra has uh, recently been made distributors for, which we're very excited about. And we're just introducing this product to market now. 
So without further ado, I'll hand over to Russell, who will uh, run us through a presentation on this. And I look forward to your questions at the end. Over to you, Russell. Well, thank you, Richard. And I just want to say that uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know everyone at Hydroterra, and in particular, Richard. And uh, we're just extremely happy to have Hydroterra representing the sample serve product in Australia. So, um, so a little bit about the um, sample serve product. It's, it basically serves a, a numerous parties in the environmental industry. Um, there's four main components to the product and they all are connected to a central secure database. The first part of it is a project management tool. And that's where you're gonna actually set up your project. You're gonna upload your uh, historical lab data, your site maps, your well construction information, your sample location information. You're gonna actually even connect to the laboratory. It's not required that you connect to the laboratory, but you can if you want. Um, and then you're gonna actually develop your scope of work. You know, what, what are you gonna sample for? Where are you gonna sample? When are you gonna sample? Uh, all that gets done in the project management tool. And then when you've got that scope of work uh, set, you're gonna hit the save button and it's gonna get pushed to the mobile field app. The mobile field app is actually, you're gonna be able to collect the, the, the field data. Um, it's gonna tell you what you're supposed to sample for and where. Um, it's gonna actually print your labels in the field at the time of sampling. And those labels have special uh, QR codes and barcodes on them that make the lab's job a lot easier. And when you're done sampling for the day or maybe at the end of your project, you're gonna generate a digital chain of custody from the mobile field app. And that digital chain of custody is gonna get pushed to the laboratory uh, almost instantly. If you're connected to the cloud, it'll get there instantly. And it has all the sample information. So the lab actually receives that information even before they receive the samples. And then when you ship those samples or deliver the samples you know, later, maybe the next day, they're able to use the QR codes, the special QR codes and the uh, barcodes to actually confirm that the bottles have in fact arrived, but they already have that chain of custody. And then they're gonna use that separate lab app to actually uh, receive the digital chain of custody, they actually log samples in using a separate lab app. And then they do the analysis there, um, you know, when they were done with the analysis, you know, days or weeks later, they're going to push that data back to the platform. Um, real simple, we can take all kinds of different data formats, they push the data back to the platform, and then the user is able to generate, they, they generate the graphics, all kinds of data box maps, uh, groundwater contour maps, isochemical contour maps, all kinds of data graphs, all kinds of data tables. You can generate all those graphics literally in a matter of minutes. So um, we, are, we also are able to connect to other enterprise level um, systems out there. Here's the flow of our data flow through our system. The project management tool pushes to the mobile field app, pushes to the lab app, and then you're able to generate all your graphics, again, all connected through one central database. But we can also push and pull data from other enterprise level data platforms. Uh, Equus, Esri, Infos, ESDAT. Um, we can push and pull data. Um, it can be done manually or it can be done through an API. We don't have uh, API set up with most of these companies yet, but um, we, we, the capability is there if they're willing. So, but we can push and pull data manually. So, uh, so here's just a, a quick overview of the project. I'm gonna go through each component in a little more detail. The project management tool is actually very simple to use. Point and click for the most part. Um, I can teach people how to use this thing in about an hour. Uh, you can schedule projects out years in advance. There's actually, a, if you're doing quarterly sampling, there's a copy and paste mechanism. So you can literally copy and paste and have your schedule set for years in advance. Uh, it actually communicates with your field technicians and your laboratory kind of simultaneously. The labs actually have a view into your schedule as well. If you selected the lab as your, your lab partner, they actually can see when you've scheduled things. And it automates the bottle orders, right? So uh, they'll ping you, it'll ping you two weeks ahead of time, um, confirming that you're still on track for a particular project and it can order the bottles for you if you're connected to the laboratory. Otherwise you can actually generate a, uh, a PDF bottle order and email it to them, um, but it'll ping you and remind you. Um, and then 
it has a very detailed scope of work. There's no question about what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, you know, where you're supposed to sample and what you're sampling for. And uh, one feature is we can convert any one of these uh, sections of our, our product into paper. So you can have a paper backup in the field with you if you feel that need. A lot of people have a hard time just going cold turkey from paper to digital and they like to have that paper in there, you know, uh, in their clipboard uh, just as a backup to give them that warm fuzzy feeling. So we allow you to be able to create paper backup um, at any point in this process. So here's a quick video of our project management tool. Um, you pick the date you're going to work. Um, it's very point and click. And then um, you will actually connect to the laboratory through this manage test. You're going to go th scroll through there, pick the test that you want to uh, sample for on your project. It then populates the list and you pick the sample locations where you're going to sample. There's even the ability to create custom forms. If you want to do a well inspection, you can do that. Um, it also handles all your quality control samples as well. And so uh, you create a custom form, pick you want to do a well inspection. It also handles all your uh, client, you know, for the, for the lab. You handle all, handles all the um, PO numbers, turnaround time, all that stuff. You can, here's where you can actually print out paper copies uh, if you want that in the field and it'll pre-print all your billing information, turnaround time, all that stuff is done automatically. So there's a paper path you can go simultaneously with the digital path. And the paper path is you know, optional, you do not have to do it. Um, and then, uh, once you push that scope of work that you've created to the mobile device, um, you, you, the mobile device is actually designed to work offline. So you sync your mobile device. So before you leave the office, you're connected to Wi-Fi. You're going to download that scope of work onto your device. And then you can work offline for the rest of the day, for the rest of that project. It'll store everything on the device. And then all you have to do is connect back to the cloud and everything will sync automatically. So uh, the information is stored on both the device and in the cloud. If you're in the field and have connectivity either through a device that is connected, you know, you know they have tablets that are um, connected you know, with cellular, uh, or you're connected through your hotspot on your phone. Um, if you're connected, it'll push and pull data kind of simultaneously or instantly. So it's in the cloud and on your device. So. Um, so there's that backup there. And then if you've got several people in the field working on a big project uh, and you've got different technicians and they're connected to the cloud, they can actually kind of see when other people have completed a sample. They don't see every piece of data being entered, but they can actually see when somebody's completed a different sample location. So it allows them to kind of uh, keep track of each other and who's completed what uh, locations. Um, and the labels, are, as I mentioned, are printed in the field at the time of sampling. So the labels are legible. You're actually going to sign your name on the device. And that label, then the, the signature is actually printed on the label. So your signature is on there. It's no, it knows it's you because you logged in with your username and password. And then there's also a, um, a GPS or a satellite view. So you'll, you can actually see where you're standing in relation to your sample locations. If you've got GPS uh, coordinates on those locations. And so you can navigate to your sample locations and it will get you within a meter of your sample location. Um, and then if you look at the uh, right-hand column there, there's a list of samples. Um, we actually look back at the last time that particular location was sampled. And we total up all the, all the contamination in that sample location. And then we list the wells for, or the sample locations from clean to dirty. Uh, you can also sort alphanumerically, but that's a good quality control measure to be able to sample from clean to dirty. And then again, if you're connected to the cloud and you're out there doing the work, the project manager can actually see the data as it's coming in. So uh, there's been numerous instances where project managers have been able to catch mistakes, you know, incorrect depth of water, or maybe they're actually sampling the wrong location. Uh, they've been able to catch these mistakes before the people leave the field. So um, they do get to a snapshot or they get a view into data as it's being collected, again, if you're connected to the cloud. And then again, you can create custom forms. So if you want to do a, a well inspection 
um, you know, well-conditioned re report form while you're out there. You create that form, it gets pushed to the mobile app and your people can fill that out and you receive the information uh, back at the office. So here's a quick video of the mobile app in action. Um, you can see a lot of just point and click, real simple to use. We recommend using a stylus because uh, if you've ever used a touch screen with a rubber glove on, it's a little difficult. You can do it, but uh, it's not as easy as your bare finger or a stylus. And you can see our labels are unique. They've got um, three parts to it. Uh, there's the main part with all the text and your signature and everything on there, the date and time. It's got a barcode and there are two separate QR codes. Now these QR codes are unique in that they're separate. Uh, and then one goes on the lid of the container that allows the lab to log things in without having to pick up each individual bottle. And then that second QR code can be left at the sample location. So let's say you're doing asbestos sampling or maybe you sampled a drum that's on site and you wanna leave that second QR code on the top of the drum. You can actually go back and scan that QR code and actually pull up the sample results after the lab has posted the data. Um, and then we can ship the field data right from the device. Again, if you're connected to the cloud, you can share that field data that you've collected just recently. Um, and you can ship it via a CSV file and a PDF. This is a, an example of what our low flow sampling data form. If you're doing low flow sampling via the field app uh, and we, there's a low flow calculator built into the app, uh, that's exactly what the low flow form will look like. You can see we have the last three photographs that you've taken included on that form and that can be shared again right from the device. Um, again, uh, as I mentioned, low flow calculator built in, we use the US EPA low flow um, calculation methods. Uh, field data forms and custom forms can be shared right from the device. So if you've got that well inspection and you need it right away, they can share that and you can have it in the office uh, instantly. And again, it's designed to work offline so you don't have to be connected. But um, you know, if you're online, you can actually share things quicker. Um, and then it turns green. Every sample location actually turns green as you're uh, done with that. So it's very easy to see how, how far you are in terms of progress. And then if you do have to switch up sample locations, or maybe you're just re, you know, responding to a new location, you don't really know exactly what you're going to sample, you got to make some in the field calls, you can do unscheduled, you can add new sample locations, switch things out in the field uh, as needed. So there's that, that capability. Everything doesn't have to be pre-planned. It obviously flows a lot easier if it is pre-planned, but there's the ability to, to do sampling on the fly as well. So our chain of custody is very unique. We actually have two US patents on this. And the, our chain of custody, uh, we know it's you. It's actually better than paper because we have a three-part authentication on the user. The first part is you enter your username and password so we know it's you, right? Never share your password. And then every time you collect a sample, you're gonna actually sign your name on the device and you're also gonna take a selfie. So that's associated with every sample collected and every transfer of custody. At the same time, when you collect that sample, we get a date and time stamp and a GPS location. So there's no question about who, where, or when each sample was collected and every transfer of custody. So here's an example of that guy signing his name on the device. He then takes the sample. He's already logged in under his username and password. And then the label is printed and he puts that label on the device. And when you're done sampling for the day, we generate that chain of custody or, or the done for the project. You don't have to do it every day. But when you're done sampling, that chain of custody gets generated. Again, it's an electronic file. Uh, it gets sent to the laboratory as an electronic file and as a PDF. So here's an example of the PDF. You can see it's got the client information, project information, invoice instructions, turnaround time. And then it looks just like every other chain of custody you've had. Sample ID, date, time, what you want to test for. Um, the, the chain of custody part's a little bit different. And we separate out like who collected each sample. So you can see here that these samples were collected by a guy named Jake Cato. Jake then gave those samples to me here. And then I took them to the laboratory. Here's Jake's selfie that he took, his signature, date and time stamp, and a GPS coordinate when he relinquished custody. And there's me accepting custody, same data points, and then the lab receiving the custody there. So, and then down here are the samples I collected. And then you can see the transfer to the um, 
to the laboratory, uh, which was actually at the exact same time. Uh, and you can print that out if you need be and, and throw that in the cooler if the lab doesn't participate. Um, if they do participate, here's our laboratory uh, application. Um, and the labs get a view, as I mentioned earlier, they get to see when things are scheduled. And then as soon as you collect that first sample, it turns to in progress. So they can see like the you're on schedule. If you schedule something for Monday and you don't do it till Tuesday, but they see it, it's in progress. Uh, they'll be able to see that instantly. Um, and then when you generate that chain of custody, it changes to in transit. Our digital chain of custody actually has no paper involved. Again, you can turn it into paper, as I emphasized earlier, um, if need be, but it is designed to have no paper involved. Our custody seal that goes on the outside of the cooler actually acts as that digital chain of custody. I'm gonna show you how that works. And then we also have a built-in sample login checklist that the laboratories use. If you've ever dropped in, dropped off samples at a lab, you know they have a little checklist, you know, is there ice, what's the temperature, uh, that kind of thing. And then we can integrate with any laboratory software system out there. And we do that either through an API or a JSON file upload. So here's a video of our lab login app in action. There's our custody seal that gets printed from the printer, goes on the outside of the cooler, and you simply scan that custody seal on the outside of the cooler with the lab app, and it pulls up that chain of custody. So it's real simple. Chain of custody gets pulled up, and then the laboratory person is going to actually then accept that chain of custody. They sign their name, take the selfie, date and time stamp, same three-part authentication. Then they can go through and complete the lab checklist, right? They, could, they can customize this lab checklist based on the type of media coming in and individual sample lo locations, sample lab locations or labs locations. So then that checklist is indicated. They then use the app, which can be on a phone or on a, on a tablet. They can scan the QR codes on the top of the labels. It saves them from having to pick up each individual bottle. It simply confirms that all the bottles are present. And then you can actually complete the chain of custody, share the chain of custody within minutes of the samples arriving at the lab, share the custody and the checklist with your client or whoever else needs to be informed. And that can be shared via a PDF or a JSON file. Um, again, that JSON file is designed to be uploaded into the lab's limb system, or we can do an API if need be. And then once the lab is done with the analysis, it's easy for the lab to upload data back to our platform. There's about 21 different ways that we can do this in different formats that we can accept. Um, if you've got a new lab that you're working with, we can actually format our input to match their output. So that's actually very easy. It's not difficult. Um, we do have some general um, examples that we can give to the laboratories and, and HydroTerra has those and they, they'd be happy to share them with uh, uh, the local laboratories. And so it's real easy. And then once the lab data is uploaded, it's point and click to generate all these graphics, all the tables, graphs, maps, contours, everything you need um, can be generated very quickly, point and click, soil, groundwater, air, you name it, we can put it on a map. Um, and then we can even compare to various cleanup criteria and even site-specific criteria. So if you've got your site-specific criteria for your project, uh, that gets uploaded and you can compare to that or all the different Australian cleanup criteria in all the different areas. Um, and then the nice thing is you can have as many graphics that you can have cross sections, different maps, hot spots, wide area maps, all on the same project. We don't care how many you have. You save your preferences for each graphic. And next time you come in there, you can actually generate these things uh, literally in minutes. I routine, routinely demonstrate that I can generate a whole suite of graphics, tables, graphs, maps, all kinds of stuff in under five minutes because I've already set it up. And all I'm going is just uh, generating new data, same graphics, just brand new data gets uploaded. And it's very quick to generate the the reports that I've already saved. Um, so they're generated in minutes and I can teach, if you've got any experience at all in the environmental industry, I can teach people how to do this stuff in generally one to two hours. And we've actually just upgraded our website so that all the training is embedded right into the workspace. So um, it's pretty much, you can teach yourself how to use this. So here's just a quick video showing you kind of how reports are generated. You take your preferences. Again, there's save buttons all over the place. Save each preference. 
and you can generate ice chemical contour maps, groundwater flow maps, all kinds of data tables, three different criteria at the same time, data box maps, um, and even ice chemical contours on a cross section. So there's all kinds of options and we're uh, creating new options all the time. Um, here's a quick list of all the different um, reports that are just common. Uh, these are the most common reports that are part of uh, you know, groundwater reports. And then uh, we can do custom things too. So if you've got some custom graphic that you're interested in, in having uh, prepared, let us know. If we have the data and you give us an example of what you want, how that report to look, chances are we can make it happen. So um, just let us know and we're happy to create these modifications because if, if you're doing it, chances are somebody else is too and, and you know, we'd be happy to, to build that for you. Um, and it's good for all kinds of projects, right? Especially in those phase, uh, property phase two property transactions where you need that report yesterday, right? As soon as the data uploads, you can have that report out the door, you know, an hour later if need be. Uh, it's good for soil sampling, remediation systems, soil vapor, surface water, wastewater, sediment sampling, air sampling, as I mentioned earlier, asbestos sampling. And in the U.S., um, it's actually uh, becoming popular with cannabis sampling as they legalize cannabis across the United States. Um, you know, there's all kinds of sampling associated with uh, cannabis. So, and then uh, for, and these are U.S. dollars here, but there's a cost savings on every aspect of the project. So, you know, pro projects are, have different components as the project management, uh, the lab interface, the field sampling, um, data management, and the report preparation. So here's a, you know, the left side is like the traditional costs. And on the right side, the different savings that we can make in every category of work. And it ends up being roughly 40 to 60% savings over to tr traditional costs. Again, these are US dollars um, and you, you know, US experience, but I don't think things are too much different in Australia. So you should see similar types of savings. And then again, uh, getting started is simple. We've got online training courses. We've got the, the videos now embedded right next to the, where you're working. It's you know, very simple. If you're trying to learn how to do a box map, the training videos right there where you're working at. And so you just, and most of our training videos are between one and three minutes long. So these are not long drawn out training videos. You need to learn just one specific thing. There's a very short video to teach you that one specific thing. So uh, we get lots of compliments on our training videos. Um, and so that's, uh, that's my presentation. So I'll turn it back over to you, Richard. Thanks very much, Russell. Um, I've noticed uh, the contacts on the right are incorrect. So if you're no. wanting to email us, uh, you can certainly email Michelle, but uh, richard at hydroterra.com.au will get your contacts through to me. Um, we've got a few questions, which is excellent. Um, but just in summary, before we um, move to those questions, I guess uh, as a person uh, who runs a business that has a field data collection part of our business, uh, there are a few advantages of this which um, maybe haven't really been touched on, which often we're dealing with customers who own, for example, say a landfill, and they're reluctant to, well, they have difficulty controlling their data and information and, and what I mean by controlling is often that data is held by third parties and um, consultants or contractors and that makes their life very difficult if um, if they're not happy with the service of, of the contractor that they're getting there it's a big deal to get that information across so this is a way for those sorts of operators of sites you know there's bigger petroleum operators, et cetera, to be able to centralize some of their data management as well. So it's a fantastic product for consultants and contractors who are collecting the data, but it is also empowering for industry. And we're certainly seeing interest from industry who actually are managing these sites that 
that are they're sort of attracted to the fact that uh, they can have a centralised process that can move uh, between contractors who are providing the works to them. But uh, congratulations on the software, Russell. I think it's, a, it's something that uh, the industry has been waiting for. So without further ado, I will move over to question and answer. First question from Juan Marino. Will the session be recorded? Uh, yes, the session will be recorded. That was an easy one. Russell, you don't need to reply to that one. All right. Second uh, question from Jeremy Richardson. Can the app receive GNSS data from receivers other than the tablet phone inbuilt GNSS receiver? Not, not currently. Okay. Another anonymous person asks, what would be the entry level cost for a small consultant? Uh, I would say um, it's going to be minimal. I mean, literally very minimal. And I would talk to Hydroterra. Uh, you know, you're going to have to get a tablet, which are, uh, you know, they're around $200 US. And then the printer, um, and we can provide those printers are um, about 800 US, depending where you get them but you can also buy them off of Amazon. Uh, we actually supply the labels at no cost if you're a subscribed user. Um, you know, we can count how many labels via the software that you've used and we'll just keep you in supply and it's just included with the cost of the software. Um, you do have to pay the shipping on the labels, but we don't, uh, we don't charge you for the labels um, because the labels are unique and, you know, we have them made, custom made. So, um, but I would talk to Hydroterra about getting going, but it's actually, um, there aren't a lot, other than hardware, there's not a lot of co a startup yeah. costs. So it's just sampling going forward. And I'll let Richard handle the pricing. And yeah, then, so Russell, just on that one. So there's a price per sample, and then there's some startup costs around hardware. Um, Hydroterra is able to provide you with hardware, either as a rental or, or as a purchase. We're looking to source these printers locally at the moment. So we're going through that exercise. We have bought some equipment to get up and going. We're going to be using this uh, for some of our field activities as well. So uh, I'd suggest if you're looking at it, if you give us a call, we can provide you with a quote for what you're gonna to need to get started um, and work through whether it's, whether you wanna purchase your own equipment or just rent the hardware. That that all makes sense. In terms of the labels, Russell, I think we'll um, purchase some to, to keep here in, in Australia just so it's easier to sure. to look yep. at shipping. shipping yeah. takes a long time. Yes, um, it does. Back to you, Russell. We want to keep asking. <laughs> uh, there's uh, looks like just one more question. Or no, it's just more. Carolyn asks, uh, can the system be used for tradeway sampling? Uh, whatever you want to put in a container, we can put a label on it. Um, the, you know, the mapping on, if you're doing drums, uh, you know, obviously mapping where the drums were and stuff like that may or may not be required, but uh, we could do that stuff. And people are using it for that type of stuff. Um, and then Peter, uh, sorry if I missed this, numerous mentions of cloud connectivity. What happens when working remotely and the connection is limited? Do operators require paperwork backup in this situation? Uh, so, Peter, no, the device is designed to work offline. Uh, I actually live in northern U.S., and so there's many areas where we work. There's no connectivity. And so um, we design this to work offline. If you're connected, the people back in the office will get the information right away, but everything is stored on the device. So all, you can work all day long not connected. It'll save everything on the device. And then all you have to do is go to your hotel or go to the coffee shop or go back to the office, connect to the cloud. The app has to be turned on, but it, all you have to do is have the app on, connect to the to Wi-Fi, boom, data goes back to the cloud and uh, people in the office can you know do what they need to do. So, um, so it's actually seamless. It, you won't even, it's like uh, super simple. And then uh, Jeremy Richardson looks like it's the last question. Are laboratories in Australia already are ready to go with your system? Uh, I'm not aware of any labs that have signed up with us yet in Australia, but here's the key, and I really want to emphasize this. 
it doesn't matter if they participate or not because we can generate that exact same paper chain of custody uh, very easily. We can generate a beforehand and then you fill it out the rest, you know, the date and the time, or you can print it out right from the device. It'll go, you can connect, you got a Wi-Fi printer and you can print it out and then throw it in the cooler. And the lab treats it just like every other chain of custody that they receive every day. Paper chain of custody, type the data in, the bottles have all the appropriate information on them. So um, if they do participate, and we don't charge labs anything, labs get to participate in this program for fee free, uh, connect them with us. We'll give them all the software. Again, any Android device can work, uh, even a phone for the lab app. Um, and then it just makes their life simpler. So, um, but so yeah, uh, we don't have any in Australia yet, but uh, um, we, you know, we're working with some big labs here in the, in the U.S. So even, even some of them that you're working with, they, you know, come out of Australia. So, so Jeremy, um, that's part of Hydroterra's role is to start those discussions with the laboratories. Um, what Russell's saying is that the system works fine without having had um, the lab sign up for the I guess, sample receipt component of the software. Um, but yeah, we'll be having discussions with you know, ALS and Eurofins and others um, about that. So if you've got a particular lab in mind, just give us a call. Um, there's another question here, Russell, yep. from Ryan Hillier. I'm not sure if you saw that one. Yep, I see it. Uh, does the platform handle multiple subsites, i.e. multiple depths at the same parent site or the same sample run? So uh, if you label the sample differently, you know, typically when you're doing a soil sampling, you'll be, you know, SB1 at, you know, we use feet in the United States, you know, so SB1 at four feet and SB1 at eight feet. So as long as there's a unique ID, uh, it'll be treated like a different sample. And uh, it can be re reported at the same location. You just put the box maps at different locations. And um, so yes, to answer your, the answer to your question is yes. Next question is a good one. Are the printers intrinsically safe? Therefore, can they be used in areas with potentially explosive atmospheres? I don't believe that the, our standard model that we use is intrinsically safe, but I do think that they make uh, some that are not intrinsically safe. And I, I guess I should add also we have the, we've created the ability to pre-print labels using an Avery, you know, the typical Avery laser jet printers. You can uh, 10, you know, labels to a page. You can pre-print all your labels. It'll have all the same information. Uh, what you will have to do, so if you do have an intrinsically safe um, situation where you, you don't want to bring the printer in, you can pre-print all your labels and all you have to do is you know, sign your name, write the date and the time, and the device will tell you the date and the time to write on the label. So it, you, you, you select, you know, no printer option. We have many users who decide they don't sample frequently enough to where they want to bother having a printer. And so they print their labels with a, a laser jet. And then they bring that stack of labels in the field. And they just make sure they pull off the right label for the right location. They do have to, again, sign their name, write the date and the time, but then everything is digital from that point on. So, so we do have an answer for that. Next questions from Matthew Long. How battery intensive is the app in its current state? Just wondering, as in rural and remote locations, it could become cumbersome to frequently need to charge the devices, carry around power backs, etc. So, so I actually sample still all the time. I actually sampled both Saturday and Sunday last week, and I will be will be sampling again this weekend. Um, and I have never run out of battery power, so it'll last all day long. Um, you know, if you as long as you keep your screen brightness. Um, uh, you know, kind of minimal. I mean, you don't want it like super, super bright because that's just going to burn power more. And then you turn it off when you're, you know, going between samples and you know, just shut the screen off. Um, so you're kind of conserving as much power as, as you know, reasonable. Um, as long as you do that, you're going to be fine. And I, again, I've never had me, I've been down to like 30% at the end of a long day. 
But um, again, I'm, I'm very cognizant of just making sure I turn the screen off. I don't just leave it on. And then the printer battery, those will last like, I've had, you know, batteries that, you know, for four days, you don't even have to charge them. It'll, the printer is like super energy efficient because it's really not doing anything unless it's printing a label. So yeah, I've never even come close to running out of power on the printer. And they're both real easy to charge, you know, so. Um, I believe we've run out of questions. I had uh, just one more comment to make, I suppose, was in one of the earlier presentations that uh, you ran through with us, you showed how you could import, you know, various cross sections and that sort of thing and have the data displaying against those. I thought that was a pretty uh, special feature. Um, just to let everyone know about that, uh, in case you missed that. So you can use, use your existing cross sections and things that you might have for the site to then form a base layer for your reporting and have those auto populate with the data sets that are coming in. So contouring over sites or contouring against cross sectional data, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, that was just a comment, really. Yep. Um, do we have any more questions? So I think we're done. I think Jeremy had one more. Our, and uh, we uh, address this. Are laboratories in Australia ready to go with your system? Uh, currently, there aren't any, but, um, you know, shortly there will be. But it doesn't matter. We've got paper methods that are very simple to implement. So um, if they're not ready, you just print out the chain of custody and everything's on it that they need. The bottles, labels will have everything on it that they need. You can work with any laboratory today um, using our system. So um, it's not and not a limiting factor whether the lab participates or not. But I would encourage you to um, talk to your lab. You know, uh, one of the ways we found out that labs become interested is when their customers say, hey, can you participate in this? And it'll make my life easier and your life easier, and it's free for laboratories, so. I think it's important, um, Jeremy, to understand that the data ingestion back out of the lab is, is already now, right? Yeah. It's just the, um, it's just this automatic receipt of samples at the lab piece that we need to go and have discussion with them because of the way it integrates with their lens system. Um, so, Basically, all the functionality that you would want to have in terms of generating these chain of custodies automatically, shipping these samples to the lab, receiving data back from the lab that can be directly ingested into your reporting is all ready to run, right? So that's up and going. Um, so 99% of what you've seen today is ready, and I'm happy to sort of clarify to you that that, that difference, it's really just about the receiving of the samples by the lab, um, bit that hasn't been negotiated yet. That's right, isn't it, Russell? Have I hit it the nail on the head there? That's good. You did. You did. Excellent. Um, and I, th I think some of these questions are repeating. So, Okay. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And a big... Um, Thank you to Russell all the way from West Michigan. Um, it's getting quite late in the evening over there. I really appreciate your time here. Um, yeah. Please feel free, everybody, to give Hydroterra a call or send us an email and we'll work through um, helping you to adopt this into your processes. Um, I think it's a, it's a great product to help get field works more organized and get rid of some of those headaches that we all have with field works. So many thanks, Russell. We might wind it up there and thank you. It's been a great turnout today and uh, welcome back to the new year. Thanks guys, appreciate it.